everybody, and welcome back. It is season two of Sheer Chat right here from the Sheer Chat studio of Washington, D.C. See, that's what you get when you get a studio audience. <laughs> I am so excited to be back, you guys. It has been, season one was absolutely amazing, and I am so happy to be back for season two to bring to you a lot of great content and some really great guests. And so without further ado, this is the premiere of season two, and we are highlighting the show Pose. If you have not seen it, I don't know what you've been doing. You need to get from under the rock you've been living under and make sure you tune in. So Pose is the new show that um, is being aired on FX, which is the cable television channel. Much of what you see on the show really speaks to me. And I said, you know what? I know some people that are in the ballroom. Let me see who I can get to come in and talk to you a little bit about it to shed a lot more light on what we're actually watching, what the truth of the ballroom is, where it started, where it is now, and what's going on. So without further ado, I'm going to bring to you my first guest of the evening, none other than Racine Pendavis, right here in Washington, D.C. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Racine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm oh, so excited to be here. Great, great. So tell us a little bit about yourself first. <laughs> Well, of course, I'm Racine Pintari, <laughs> the queen of the shameless plug, darling. Exactly. I'm the host of uh, the Ask Racine Show, which is at HRC, first Wednesdays of every month. Please follow me at R-A-Y-C-E-E-N, the Ask Racine Show, on all forms of social media. It's a free LGBT talk show. We include live music, burlesque. It's an amazing experience, and it's an inviting and affirming space for everybody. And of course, I'm from the legendary house of Pendarvis. Yes, honey, the legendary, one of the older founding houses that set the tone back in the day. I love all the new children, but you know, without the new, you must have the old. Exactly. So it is so important that, uh, and of course, my mother was the uh, incredible Avis Pendarvis. Learn it, love it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so. And live. And live. Okay. And live. God rest her soul. But uh, it's it's a, just a wonderful experience. And if many don't know what houses are, I would say that they're more like fraternities uh, started by the LGBT community. They have a mother and they have a father and they, they're very structured like a real family. But now in this generation, now, now they're more structured towards fraternities and sororities where they're raising money. Mm -hmm. They're doing community awareness. They're doing so many things that now to see it at the level it is, the kids are voguing in Russia, ro voguing in China. Oh. Voguing in Paris, all over the world, and these amazing lights like uh, Monet Ebony, uh, Jack Mizrahi, mm -hmm. a Rose Chanel, and to see uh, the wonderful uh, experiences on Pose mm -hmm. um, and the old how they pay homage to the old uh, legendary children. Mm -hmm. The pioneers are uh, the head judges: Saul Pendarvis, Freddie Pendarvis, mm -hmm. Caesar Extravaganza, mm -hmm. and uh, and to see all of them on the on the main stage as the main judges and all these amazing upcoming young wonderful amazing right. houses paying homage so, so so you know i think it's so important that you know and, and to celebrate these amazing houses now the house of balenciaga mm. you know so the house of uh Garçot and the uh, all of these uh, and of course you know these amazing houses the houses of Khan, the houses of chanel once again mm. you know all of those the ebony's the cons all of those, and of course, you know, if coming up, I remember when there was the, the House of Pendarvis, the House of Extravaganza, the House of Lavesha, mm -hmm. and the House of Dorian Quarry. So out of that, all of that came, all of these wonderful, right. the House of St. Laurent, started by Robbie St. Laurent. And see, that's what I was gonna say, let me just interject mm -hmm. for just a moment, that with those, those primary, I think it was like four or five, yeah have birthed all of these oh houses God, that all we of see them. now. It's and amazing. See, when I came through, I was excited because there was just so many at that time. You know, it had not dawned on me that there were, at one time was only a few. And very in my few, mind, very few. It was, you know, all I saw was what always was. Right. And so that's why I brought you here because I said, with that history, people need to understand, right. you know, the beginning 
That's to understand point. where we are now. So I would say that because I'm a certain age, <laughs> AARP, <laughs> that I would, you know, I, I like, I think young people use the word legend and they love that word. Mm-hmm. I would say that I'm a pioneer. Mm-hmm. Well, I was saying, you know, I had another word for you, another name, another title. What is and it? I said, to me, you are an icon because you have a name that can be said in many different settings and people know who you are. And to me, that is iconic. You know, when you can go, like you said, in the ballroom, you can go out of the ballroom, you can go anywhere in the community and say racing. Like, oh, I know racing. It's been a you blessing. Know. It's been a blessing. I think with the Pendarvises, I think, especially with my house, we went from ballroom into community mm-hmm. activism. Mm-hmm. We went into the areas of mental health, politics. I'm a former ASC commissioner. I'm a community activist still, so I'm fighting for rights of all people. Mm-hmm. But I, especially the senior LGBT community, especially working with the office on aging mm-hmm. and I'm doing amazing things with them terrific Inc, which is now having an event this weekend called pride has no age okay. and uh, at the historical Thurgood Marshall Center on Friday mm-hmm. and it's open to the public and now on Eventbrite it's all sold out okay so now it's like you have to get on a list amazing. Right. so you know list. and it's an amazing experience to be able to transcend from ballroom of course people see the fabulous mm-hmm. side and they think that uh, that uh, certain people latched onto it and they were the beginning. Mm-hmm. And when their videos pop, everybody thought they were the beginning. But, you know, if we had to go early on, we think of the early videos right. that paid homage. Queen Latifah coming to my house, Liz mm-hmm. Torres, Malcolm McClary, uh, Jody Watley, mm-hmm. Friends, uh, Diana Ross. <laughs> Uh, this house, so you know, and then came, you know, and then Madonna, and mm-hmm. then everything blew up, and it just became this multi generational. Uh, everybody just jumped on the the bad right. Let's vogue, let's do right. this, and did it. Be, and it, be, it went from underground to mainstream. And that's that was one of the points of this evening. I wanted to talk about is how because I remember even before I was, you know, in the scene hearing about how underground it was. It was like you had no idea where the ball was, you know. Um, And for those who don't know, I am from New Jersey, so I experienced the ballroom scene first of New York. Um, I did not travel down here. My first couple of years were there, so that was When New York was the mecca. Even though we had balls in various cities, but New York was the mecca. That was... And everybody, there were balls four times a year. Right. It was Paris's ball, Avis's ball, Dorian's ball, Mm -hmm. and Pepper ball. Everybody, I mean, we would clamor. You know, you wait all year long. If you lost that Avis's ball, you would give it a well. I'm, I'll suffer. I'm a pitcher. That was ball, you know. So I'll see you. And I'll see you at that ball. So those were these amazing balls, and and they were so phenomenal. And to speak to these amazing people, people like uh, Robbie Saint Saint Laurent, mm-hmm. who went on and did these amazing things around mental health. I love Robbie, uh, Brenda Milan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the house of Milan, God bless him, the house of uh, Devin Elite, out of that, the house of Mugler, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and people don't know the house of Khan was started right yeah, here in D.C. Right. by Lowell Khan, the grandfather of the house of Khan, who started it, and I mean, you know, really made a name. You know, back in the 60s when I was growing up, when we were going to balls in Jersey and in New York, there were balls here, but everybody clamored to go right, to, New York. to New York. Right. So then when the 70s came, of course, in the early 60s, the girls raved. The transsexuals mm-hmm. ruled, ruled supreme. It was amazing. The girls, it was like walking into a Las Vegas show. Mm-hmm. The, you know, I, the first time I went, I said, are these all show girls? <laughs> tired, what's what's going, going on? on? Right. I, I had no idea. So so then, of course, they, they always had categories for straight children, too. So straight kids were welcome, and they had straight categories where the kids came and they competed in ballroom, with it national dancing ballroom, and the kids competed in that area. Then the, the, the women, butch and femme, mm-hmm. had those categories for straight women and real women and where they could come and compete. And then it transitioned into the butch queens in mm-hmm. the 70s, where, you know, in the 70s where the butch queens were coming through and they were, you know, it was all male-dominated. Right. Right. And then in the 80s, it became this thing where everybody wanted to look like Dinah. Yeah, I was about to say, Paul <laughs> Crest and, and Joan Collins and, and any models like Lindy Evangelist and, uh, you know, Naomi Campbell and all of those girls. Now, wait a minute.
minutes. So you've given us a lot of history. I'm going to take a break. Take Real a break. Quick. I'll be okay. back. We will be back in one second with a lot more. This is Racing Pendal is yeah. here for yeah. season two premiere of Sheer Chat. I'm your host, Rashawn Broadnax, and we'll see you in a moment. Bam. Welcome back once again, everyone. This is the season two premiere of Sheer Chat. I am your host, Rashawn Broadnax, and I am so excited. We have dedicated this premiere show to the show, Pose. Right when we left, we were talking to the one I called the icon, Miss <laughs> Racine Pendavis, right over here. So we were talking about um, the houses that really started the scene. And so you went through a list of names right. and it's a couple of people who like you said transitioned from the ballroom into mainstream with doing a lot of community activism work and so finish off with that oh well, i was just saying how people use it as a springboard and and use it to go into other areas music mm -hmm. uh fashion uh various various uh other entities surrounding beyond the ballroom and i think it's amazing especially if i had to really pay homage to Someone I would think of Tracy Africa, okay. who was a well-known model who mm -hmm. became the mother of the House of Africa, and then went on to just blow up, blow up, right. blow up. On and the scene. still, and here she is in her 60s, still, and has come back as the Clara spokesmodel on the original box. I was there she was so the original color. Excited. And I mean, she is just like walking in her prime and it goes to show that life becomes full circle. Absolutely. Now let me just say I was so excited when I saw the commercial with Tracy on it because Clairol is one of the brands that we work with at the school. And so when they sent the information, I was like, excuse me. And then I got to see the full commercial and everything. I was just so excited. And I get so excited, like you said, to see people in our community transcend from the ballroom you know, into mainstream doing their art, you know, bringing forth their art and everyone really celebrating and appreciating what they do. That's amazing. And speaking to that, I would have never thought, first of all, in my lifetime, that I would live to see uh, something such as Pope mm -hmm. that has the largest seven transgender actors actresses all in lead roles. Mm -hmm. The first time ever, I applaud Ryan Murphy and I applaud FX for telling our stories telling and most story. of all, telling the story of the LGBTQIA experience and not just saying, it's not just ballroom. Mm -hmm. It is our community, our experiences as a whole. As a whole. As a whole. And so from there, I'm going to bring in our next guest who is the father of the house of Balenciaga right here in the Washington, D.C. area. Harold Balenciaga, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, I, wanted, I have to tell you this story. See, I don't know if you know this, Harold, but Harold and I used to talk online years ago, like when they had the AOL chat room. That's where we initially met. And I came to D.C. first because of the ball that you had here and i think it was in 2002 or something like 2001 2002 that was at the uh washington plaza hotel okay and that was my first time here in dc like just um recreationally i had been here before you know for singing events and things like that but never recreationally hadn't been here for years and i said i was gonna come down here and look at it i done moved here all because of that event because <laughs> I absolutely love this. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from New Jersey. Um, I moved here um, in the late 80s <laughs> to Washington, D.C., so I'm telling my age. Um, yes, yeah, so I moved here, um, and I didn't start in the ballroom community at a young age like a lot of people, but I always, as the saying goes, I was always around the ball kids. Mm -hmm. And um, even when I moved here, my first few years here, I had friends who were in the scene. They were very close with Racine. Um, rest in peace, David and Darius. Um, but they were very close with Racine. And, you know, um, so I still had exposure to um, ballroom culture. Um, and then I, in 1996, I joined the house of Miyaki Mugler. I was there for six years before uh, founding the House of Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm here in the community. Um, I love being a part of um, our community. And, you know, as Racine has said, you know, a lot of times I think people look at things 
um, from a micro standpoint. Mm -hmm. But from a macro point of view, I never would have imagined, you know, not only seeing um, ballroom on t television, to see, you know, the constant involvement, um, you know, that the community has involved. I mean, the things that we're seeing in our community, you know, where you have politicians fighting mm -hmm. for transgender rights, yes. um, you know, the legalization of gay marriage. Growing up, we never mm -hmm. imagined, you know what I'm saying, that. So to see where we are, you know, is really, really is a testimony to people like Racine, honestly, mm -hmm. who has for years, you know, even after Racine really, you know, kind of more so moved away from competing in the scene, you know, was really about activism, was always in the forefront, you know, not just for, and, and, and never shied away. You know, that, that's one thing I can say, and I think it's, it's amazing, is that, you know, Racine was never one of those people to shy away from, you know, her roots. Always, mm -hmm. always been Racine, Pendavis, mm -hmm. you know, this and that, whatever. So, to me, I say Racine is the matriarch of the DC LGBT scene. And see, that's why you got that title. See what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, and I receive it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I receive it. Absolutely. You know, walking in our light of understanding. And I just say, to you know, I always believe in, in or, and to young people, especially as you enter this ballroom community, know your history. It is important to know those who paved the way for you. They understand you need to know, if you don't know who Crystal LaBeja is, you're in trouble. Right. If you don't know who Paris uh, Dupree is, you're in trouble. If you don't know who Avis Pendarvis is, you're in trouble. Dorian Corey, you're in trouble. Angie Extravaganza, you're in trouble. Know these people, uh, Tennille Dupree, you know, all of these amazing, or wonderful, iconic pioneers who just, when I'm looking at polls, I'm seeing so much of their spirits mm -hmm. And everything like the last the, uh, the issue fever. I applaud you, Janet Mock. Wait, but she did an awesome she, job. She, with that episode. that episode fever was awesome. amazing, and to see, especially when they talked about the issue surrounding the whip, the transgender women, and how they want to mm -hmm. uh, enhance yeah. their bodies, mm -hmm. and talked about the issue surrounding silicone injection. Well, wait, I'm gonna stop you there because you are going ahead. Ooh. I need to start first from the first episode. What did you guys think about that? Because it spoke a lot to me because I said, the one thing that I like about Pose is where you were going. It speaks about, it, it tells somebody's story. Right. And with every episode that I have watched so far, I have been able to think of somebody where I know that story. Right. You know, I, right. I know that I can say that's so-and-so. And so, that's one of the questions that I wanted to ask of you guys, too. A little later in the show, as you watch the scenes, do you start to say, I know that person? You know, I, I can see them, you know, I and oh, I, I know at one point I got, actually happened. I, I, I got very emotional. At one point, there were tears, one of joy, mm -hmm. and there were tears of sorrow because I think about the, the people, the names that folks will never know, mm -hmm. those in the community that died early on and didn't live their full potential. Right. Well, as they could have, mm -hmm. what we consider full potential. Let me rephrase that. They didn't live to get old. Mm -hmm. They lived their life as a comet in their full potential, and that, and they made an impact for our LGBT community. But I wish the world would have gotten mm -hmm. to know people like uh, uh, Tracy Ebony, mm -hmm. Puffy Ebony, uh, uh, Toronto Ebony, uh, you know, all of those amazing people that, uh, you know, just uh, uh, Tempest St. Laurent, mm -hmm. um, Octavia, they knew her from Paris is Burning, mm -hmm. but to sit down and have a conversation with these people, uh, you know, and G Gerald Dupree, you know, um, Cabbage Patch, you know, mm -hmm. all of those wonderful and people. And the list goes on. And the list goes on. So mm -hmm. many people that I, my mind is blanking, but... Um, I just wish they could have known them and seen them in the light that we saw right, right. and how they touched our, our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Okay, so real quick, before we take a break, how tell me what you thought about the first episode. You know, I, I, I was really just, I was so blown away um, initially. I mean, I think that, I think that, you know, unfortunately, I think that some of the greatest scrutiny of ballroom really has come from former participants, other people in the LGBT 
um, QIA community. Um, and ballroom has always carried this stigma um, of negativity. And it for me, it was such an empowering moment just, you know, just for, 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 for all those people that have bore the brunt of, you know, the reads of, mm -hmm. oh, you participate in this scene, the, you know, the dates that did the, didn't want to be bothered. Right. Oh, you know, the so, 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 so again, for me, you know, w w without focusing on the specific episode, just the magnitude of, you know, just seeing this show on TV, mm -hmm. you know, meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be back in a moment uh, with more conversation about the show Pose. This is the season two premiere of Sheer Chat. I am so excited to have Racine and Harold here with me. I'm your host, Rashawn Broadnax, and we'll see you in a few moments. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So we were just having a riveting discussion about what well, kind of glazing over um, episode number one of Pose, which can be seen on FX every week right now. I think we are, this was what, uh, episode four? Or was this three? Three. 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 Was this four. three? Uh -huh. three. three. This was four? Four. Okay, so it was three or four. What you need to do is go to your on-demand and watch. Uh, but you well, can do that. Oh, yes, the app as well. You can watch it every Sunday um, at 8 p.m. Or is it 9? Nine, nine, is it 9? Nine? 9 p.m. Nine Lord have mercy. Depending on where you're Forgive me. Okay. Eastern right. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard, Standard, Standard Time. So 9 yeah. Eastern Standard Time, you can watch it. And um, you can see, and I would say go on Twitter as well, because we do a tweet storm throughout the entire show. You know, I am so engulfed in the phone. I, and I'm the queen of t Twitter. And I do Baby. not tweet, but I tweet throughout the week about the show. Okay. Because, you know, I just had a conversation with some people who will remain nameless. And to <laughs> oh, sit in a group of LGBT people and hear the negative comment comments around polls, when my heart cringe, because I literally got very puffed up and very defensive. And I said, can we celebrate it? first mm -hmm. before we tear it down. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate the experience someone is from our community telling our stories. And I think about folks like I applaud Lee Daniels and the whole Fox mm -hmm. to to have shows like Empire Integrate and, and folks like Star, Miss Lawrence, God bless you. I love you, sister. That's my niece actually, mm -hmm. niece and Amaya. And mm -hmm. these folks, when I see them living these their authentic selves and telling our stories in other films and series who springboarded out of the ballroom community, I applaud all of that. So even in the midst of when folks are hating us, we still have to celebrate the growth mm -hmm. and the experience of where we come from and the right to tell our stories and the right to be at the table. Now, after I had this conversation and doing the conversation with these uh, friends of mine, I said to them, we can agree to disagree. And I'll give you that because opinions are like, mm -hmm. are, everyone's opinion should be appreciated. So instead of tearing it down, let's find the negative in it. Mm -hmm. So then we picked apart every episode and then before the conversation was over, we were celebrating points mm -hmm. and things within the series that they could identify with. So I said, celebrate that. Right. And I think that's, that goes along to what Harold was saying, you know, when you talk about uh, other people's perception of the ballroom, you know, so quick uh, do, you, do people tear it down. You know, and I myself, I had friends um, around the time when we had met who would say, why are you, you know, why are you involved with it? Like, what is, what's the draw? And I said to me, ironically, now I don't know if this was for anybody else, I fell in love with the energy of the ballroom. It is like nothing else I had ever, ever experienced. The first time I walked into the room to feel the energy, to hear the screams of adoration of the people walking, to me, that was amazing. I had never experienced it anywhere else in my life. I, I think it, when, to add on to that, I think about when you think about the whole experience. Imagine 
a, a, a marginalized group of people. Mm -hmm. And let's be clear, it, we created this world when folks were not accepting us. Mm -hmm. We had to create an area and to, to affirm ourselves. Right. To, in a space that will affirm us when society was tearing us down as LGBTQI people. When they were saying you could not live your authentic truth as a transgender woman or a transgender man or a non-gender conforming mm -hmm. person. But we could compete. Right. And if we were not born kings and queens, which we come from, in the ballroom we were. Mm -hmm. right. We had that moment where you right. felt like Queen Elizabeth. And you competed and you were serving it. So, and then, but it also taught you that life is not going to be fair. To, but to be a winner, you must know how to be a loser. Absolutely. And you know how to pick up your face. Now, some there, here's the shade. Mm -hmm. The kids would fight. <laughs> they would read, turn tables over, and get ugly. But isn't that everywhere? I've gone to many straight clubs and the kids have fought, turn tables, knock tables over. So it's just not a us, the ballroom, right? it is what it is. You got good people and bad people in the world. So I feel it's important. And then when we come in this space, and what I love about it is long lasting friendship and community that I've known Harold for, for over 30 years now. And, and to see when outside the ballroom, how you gather your kids have sure, picnics there too. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So when you have picnics and cookouts and to right. gather with the ballroom community, just last weekend we were there, the fifth year running, and Robbie's cookout and um, Coco's cookout, where they get together and, and fellowship mm -hmm. in various parts of the city. But what I loved about when we went out on the pier, and we see the changing of the pier was ours. It was a place that we called our own. And now that it has been gentrified, right. <laughs> the folks that didn't want to come down on right. the pier now in their million dollar there. homes and don't like looking out there in 10th floor and 24th window, mm -hmm. seeing the kids voguing on right. the pier, but that was ours. Mm -hmm. right. And that was something we had that was ours and, and it's so important. And to sit and feed all of these hungry young people who leave these small communities in these small towns and come to a Mecca, a big right, a city, big city, and join a house because they were thrown out of their own house. Mm -hmm. So I applaud where we are. So I want people to understand it is more than just competing in a category mm -hmm. and winning a trophy. It is, it is understanding that we walk hand in hand through this journey in life and we lift each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important to highlight is the nature of the house you know what was the original premise right. and because a lot of people don't know that you know there's a lot of stigma and things about what we see you know what uh, children may have experienced from various parents of houses but they don't and they don't understand why it all started where it came from so you want to talk a bit about that well yeah well bef before before I go into that I, I wanted to touch on something that Ray said sure. So I was having a, I was in, I was, as I said, I'm from New Jersey and I was home and I was having a conversation with my mother and a family friend. And this was at a time that I really, you know, thought about moving back and away from ballroom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my and I was, you know, giving my reasons and, you know, my mother said to me, she said, you know, you know, I've always wanted you, my mother's deeply religious. Mm -hmm. So my mother said, you know, I've, I've always aspired and wanted you to be a preacher growing up. And, you know, when, I came to, you know, understand your path in life and where you were going. And I guess that was her, you know, embracing, you know, my sexuality. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, me and, me and some friends were talking and, and I was explaining to them about the house of Balenciaga. And, you know, a lady brought up a point and she said, you know, maybe your son is fulfilling mm -hmm. what, you, what, you, what you actually envisioned because Based off what you're saying, there are so many people that are lost, that would be lost, mm -hmm. but because of you know the interaction, the guidance they get from people that you know what I'm saying they're able to you know grow and, and, and transcend through uh, particular situations and you know just grow in life. So you know to you know flow into what you what you were asking. Um, the role of the house, you know, basically, and as you saw in Pose, and you know, you you if you watch Paris is Burning, which is a documentary documentary on YouTube or it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Netflix is better quality. 
<laughs> right. but, so if you have Netflix, watch it on Netflix. But if not, you can watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's Paris is Burning. But as Racine said, you know, houses provided a family, a safety net, a haven for these people that, you know, that were in a time where, you know, their parents didn't understand, you know, them being gender non-conforming or, you know, them deciding that they wanted to transition. And, and, and not even to that point, there were, you know, there were guys that, you know, were, were still maybe masculine, but, you know, they knew that they were gay gay, gay males and, and their families found out and, and they were ostracized. And even, even for those kids that still live with their family. Joining a house provided them a haven to get away and be a part of, you know, a part of, you know, some somewhere where they can mm-hmm. feel, you know, their true authentic self. So, yes, you know, we can't sugarcoat it and say that, you know, there aren't parents that, you know, may have had, you know, relationships with kids or, you know, mm-hmm. there weren't people that got on drugs or in, into any type of illegal activities. But what aspect of life don't we don't see that? Exactly. Well, you know, we see that when kids go off to college, and you know we, we've seen that with different scandals. We've seen that with the church. You know, so, so this is all a part of life. And you know, unfortunately, you know, as I said, um, I made a post a while back. Everybody doesn't look. What I've come to learn as a father is everybody doesn't look at being in a house the same way. Mm-hmm. For some people, it's a family. For some people, it's an organization they're in. Mm-hmm. Some people look at it as like a business. Right. You know, so there is no real one definition of what what, what does a house mean because mm-hmm. it's really it's really about what that particular individual feels and how that individual feels. Gotcha. So we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back. I am Rashawn Broadnecks, the host of the evening, and always here at Sheer Chat with my guests Racine Pendavis and Harold Balenciaga. We'll see you in a moment. <laughs>